Hello, friends. Uh, welcome back to our continuing series of examining some of the big questions in life. And we've been looking at the question of why, why am I here? What's my purpose? And boy, we've covered a lot of ground. This is it. This is the finale right this, here. This is it. And I think that today we can kind of take all of those individual notions of what we're called to do and put them together, I think, and see some cohesive um, uh, cohesiveness in it. Um, and it's really based on that we're called, we're called to mirror Christ's love, mm. the love that he has for us and how we are to love others. Uh, you asked me a while ago, of, well, why do you play golf? And I probably gave you the answer that I think most people, if you did a survey and stopped people coming out of a country club, they'd say, I love it. Right. I just love it. And, and if you were me being the inquisitive mind, I said, well, why do you love it? And I, I talked earlier about this kind of challenge of trying to improve. Well, I love it because of the competitiveness. I love it because of the community I have with my brothers. I love it because I'm blessed to be here in a place where there's mountains and sunshine and palm trees. I get fresh air. I get some exercise. My wife says no, but I get exercise. <laughs> I, I call it exercise. Uh, just all of those reasons together, uh, I love it. And, you know, I love life. I love, I love life as well, uh, uh, to be able to uh, realize how God has loved me and what that means for me to take it out uh, into the world. So talk to me about what God's told us about this notion of loving others as he's loved us. Well, again, if you, if you realize that the eternal state will be replace injustice and hatred oh. and thievery yeah. and anarchy yeah. and, and murder with love, then we might want to become practiced in that attribute while we're on earth again and also an ability. It really only is the glue that ah. glues everything together. Yeah. So we talk about pleasing God. How do you please God without loving your neighbor? Uh, how do you, and that's a rhetorical question asked in the Bible and answered in the Bible. Uh, how do you take the gospel to the hurting earth and not love the people that you're taking it to? It's yeah. impossible. They, yeah. They'll know it's inauthentic. And so, and how do we steward our gifts for serving others? Well, it's because we love others. And why do we in community? Because we love others and we, we give out the love that we've received, et cetera, et cetera. So love really is. So if we go back, we kind of made a progression here through the series, through Romans chapter 12, Paul's letter to the church in Rome. We started with the idea of sacrifice, Paul does, and then the renewal of the mind, and, and we moved on to stewardship of gifts. Listen to where uh, he picks this up. It's very fascinating. He goes on in verse 9, Romans 12, 9, says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Part of loving is just to hate evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Now, this is, you say, well, why am I here? Well, one of the reasons is to learn to love and then practice it. I want to be devoted in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. Now, that's something Jesus mastered. Yes. He always gave preference. Washing the disciples' feet. Are we washing others' feet figuratively? Not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints and practicing hospitality. Again, all this based in love. Now, John 13, listen to John, the Apostle John. Listen to what he says. He says, again, he says, he's quoting Jesus. Jesus says simply this, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you love one another. Now catch this, and this is the important, this will be kind of our finale. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. So what we've been called to do is love God, and through that 
we're able to get the empowerment through the Holy Spirit in our relationship with God to then turn around and people we used to hate or talk poorly about or, or even steal from, we turn and we serve them, we lift them up, we encourage them. It's a whole different kingdom, Oli. Oh. And again, it's love. So Jesus, some people say, well, see, there's no judgment or this, you know, Jesus is just, a, Jesus is just all about love. Jesus is all about love because he also recognized, and sometimes people don't share the gospel, it's just about love. If you just go out and love, that's all you need. The most loving act you will ever engage in is to share the beauty and the transformative power of Jesus himself. I think that really is why we're here. The very core purpose is to expand his kingdom, which is a kingdom of love. I can't add to that, folks. <laughs> I can't. Neither can I. I'm glad Jesus said it. He did. And we hope that over the past uh, nine weeks that you've, uh, that this has helped you understand or at least appreciate and think about that whole notion, that big question of why am I here? Thanks for being with us. Yeah, thank you. And we'll see you for the next series. Take care, everyone.